What is up, everybody? Since pitching's been kind of random over the past couple of days, instead of my filthiest pitches of the day, I thought I'd give a couple of things that jumped out at me. First, I know we all know about Kodai Senga's impact this year, more specifically his ghost fork. It's been one of the best pitches in baseball, has about a 60% whiff rate on the season, opponents are only hitting 147 against it. And, as you already know, Logan Gilbert borrowed the ghost fork and has been throwing it all season. And so I was just working on this basically all off season. Um, it's kind of like, I know you just had, um, I think his name is Senga. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. You're throwing a ghost yeah. fork. So it's a little bit similar to that. Uh-huh. It's kind of just split around the one seam there. Well, yesterday, one of Senga's teammates borrowed his ghost fork as well. Here's Tyler McGill throwing a splitter. Actually, he threw more than one. He averaged 35 inches of drop on them, 14 inches of run, 84.9 miles an hour, and a spin rate of 786. In comparison, Senga's metrics on his ghost fork are 37.7 inches of drop, 7.3 inches of run, averaging 83.2 miles an hour, and an average spin rate of 1118. Remember, on a splitter or fork ball, a lower spin rate is better because it means it's going to drop more. Now look, McGill's first strikeout on a splitter wasn't all that great a pitch. It was kind of right down the middle. But if he can perfect this, it would be awesome. And I'm curious to see how much he works on it in the offseason, how much he throws it next year. Even better is the name that McGill came up with for his fork ball or splitter. Messing around with this one. That's Kodai's grip you were using? Yeah. So are you legally allowed to call it a ghost fork? <laughs> No, we've been calling it the American Spork. <laughs> so, Off-brand version. Yeah. So. Yes, the American Spork. I mean, what's more American than a spork? The goat of all utensils, because it's a spoon and a fork. For those who want to see it again, here's Kodai Singa's ghost fork grip. So thumb to the side. You're... Maybe well. On the side. Lastly, I know we all saw Adam Wainwright take his last at bat, which was fantastic. Everyone enjoyed it except Buster Olney, who had this comment on my Twitter. I thought Buster was kidding, but apparently he might not have been. I mean, it is a thing that a lot of pitchers do groove a pitch in a retiring legend's last at bat. And this game was 14 to 2 at that point. Brandon Bird Dog Williamson, the pitcher here, chimed in and said, I told him what's coming, Busty. Easy. Number one, I thought that was a great reply by the Bird Dog. Number two, I went through the at-bat, and you can see Wainwright nod to him and point back at the mound to the Bird Dog, like he was acknowledging something, so he actually might have told him what's coming. Anyway, I was curious as to everyone's thoughts on this, so leave me your thoughts in the comments. Should you groove a pitch in this situation? Is it understandable that a rookie might want to keep his stats pretty good? And also, is it worth jeopardizing even slightly your team's chance to win to honor an opposing vet? And don't worry, I'll be back with my filthiest pitches during the entire postseason. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start out with Lucas Giolito for 6Ks or more and take Michael King for 7Ks or more and top it off with Hunter Green for 7Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 